Hi, I'm Ted Nelson. I hated history in school. It was taught mainly, mainly as dates, kings, and wars in Europe, and going back only to ancient Greece and Rome. Only as an adult have I begun to feel the extraordinary fascination of history. So this is my overall picture from a lot of reading, which I'd like to pass on to you. A lot of my points are arguable. I've omitted exceptions and qualifications to try to bring you a comprehensive picture of human history. Right, written history began about four, begins only about 4,000 years ago. European history begins, that is, the Greeks and Romans began their histories with the legend of the Trojan War, 13 centuries BC, started by goddesses and continued by humans for 10 years because a gal named Helen was kidnapped and ending with a wooden horse in which Greek soldiers hid. Both the Greeks and Romans began their histories with that highly implausible story. There was also a city, there was actually a city that may have been called Troy, and there may have been a war involving people with those names, but nobody believes in those goddesses anymore. And even if there were a Trojan War, never mind the goddesses, that's hardly the beginning of history. It was just the written myth of the Greeks and the Romans. There are other written myths and legends from the Hebrews and China and Japan, but they all start their narratives only a little before writing was invented, roughly 5,000 years ago. <laughs> And the human race is much, much older. How long have we had language? Language is what defines the human race. Humans developed language in Africa. The question is how long ago? A common scientific estimate is 200,000 years. That's 2,000 generations. Scientists concerned with this problem concentrate on two aspects, the structure of the throat and the FOXP2 gene, which had a specific mutation a long time ago and has a crucial role in language. But some now think that Neanderthals had those same structures and gene. So perhaps a common ancestor of humans and Neanderthals had language, which would push the origin back much farther. But I won't pursue that. Some say language evolved gradually in the intermediate stages. Maybe there were, but it was a categorical change. And proto-humans in Africa abruptly got speech, and we became Homo sapiens 200,000 years ago or longer. Before that, humanoids, some say hominids, hominins, could not speak. Some say 200,000 years ago is the earliest that language began. I won't argue about when it was, though I especially like the million-year hypothesis. This diagram is valid regardless of that span of time. 200,000 to a million years ago, speech, i.e. humanity, and homo sapiens, and then comes the Stone Age. 100,000 years ago, we leave Africa. 10,000 years ago, agriculture. 8,000 years ago, cities. 5,000 years ago, bronze and writing. Before language, there were other early near humans that fanned across the globe using stone tools without language. Those relatives that fanned out, like Homo erectus and Homo habilis, would have communicated with gestures and eyes, such as chimps and gorillas do, but not with speech. You can see this communication with eyes in a great Disney documentary called Chimpanzee. It shows chimpanzees coordinating to kill and eat a monkey, coordinating with gestures and with eyes as to who will chase, who will guard, who will catch. And Disney's hidden cameras actually capture this negotiation and the success of their plan as they carry it out. So the other great apes before us, including Homo habilis, could work together without words. But when did language appear? Humanity with language, Homo sapiens, has been on the planet for a long time, generally thought to have been 200,000 years. That's 5,000 generations. I kind of prefer the estimate of a million years, but that's just my romantic streak. 200,000 years is less striking. That's only 5,000 generations. This diagram is, regardless, is valid regardless of the time span. The Stone Age. And agriculture being the main points. By the way, the quote, caveman, is a myth. There were never enough caves. Okay. Humans evolved speech in Africa, in other words, became human a very long time ago. Perhaps 200,000 years ago, or perhaps earlier. And most of that time we stayed in Africa. Till 100,000 years ago and many are still there, some 3,000 remaining tribes in Africa. Only in the last 
100,000 years have we talking humans spread out across the globe. Africa probably got crowded, tribes pressuring each other gradually northward, and we still had brown skin as we moved north, which then evolved to a lighter color as different tribes went north to Europe, eastward to the farthest parts of Asia, and across into the Americas. But this wave out of Africa was only a small genetic sample of human diversity. Those remaining in Africa are much more varied genetically, some very tall, some very small, but fully human and fully intelligent, speaking still in Africa, some 2,000 different languages. So, when that wave left Africa 100,000 years ago, they, or rather we, were still hunter-gatherers with brown skin, but there was bigger game up north. We hunted the mammoths to extinction, the great hairy elephants, and the rhinos of Europe. We had to survive in plentiful times and tough winters, that is, some survived. In those recent 100,000 years, there were several ice ages that probably killed most of the humans in Europe each time. Now, for all that time, from the beginning of language until agriculture, we were hunter-gatherers. That's called the Stone Age. We city dwellers have long talked about, quote, primitive people who <coughs> don't have writing or cities, but primitive people are very smart. You have to be to get along in the wilderness. Agriculture changes everything. I'll postpone that. From the birth of language till agriculture 10,000 years ago, that's 95% or more of human history, or thousands of generations. It was the Stone Age. We wore skins. We used arrows and spears and traps and stone knives, and we were very good at it. Stone Age people were never stupid. They were observant, careful, and clever. We had not just stone tools, which made good knives and arrowheads. We also had tools of wood and leather and bone. Uh, wood and bone and leather and even string. There are excellent videos on YouTube showing how rocks can be broken into sharp-edged tools. We ate whatever mammals and fish and birds we could catch. We ate roots, seeds, plants that we learned were safe. In hunter-gatherer societies, there seemed to have been relative equality. I've been reading anthropology papers on how hunter-gatherers today keep the peace with a lot of diplomacy. Hunter-gatherer tribes are limited in population. There are great BBC videos on remaining hunter-gatherer tribes <coughs> like the Hazada and the Ikum that make it all seem like sweetness and life. The life in a hunter-gatherer tribe seems very happy-seeming, but that's in good times and good weather. So the term for us all, till agriculture, was hunter-gatherer. That was the tribal era, the Stone Age. Hundreds of thousands of very different tribes over that long and distant past their cultures and languages now lost look very much like tribes that still exist today. Humanity was divided into tribes with small populations, a few dozen in a tribe to a few thousand at most. 200 is a figure that's often mentioned. As the tribe grows, it splits and separates. So let's talk about tribal life, cultural anthropology in brief. We city folk tend to have naive views of tribalism. We think of, quote, primitive tribes as simple, not at all. The richness and variety of tribal worlds are hard to imagine, full of traditions, obligations, and complexity. In every culture, there are always highborn and lowly, sometimes even slaves, <coughs> laws and rules, deals and promises, concepts of honor and integrity, embarrassment and humiliation, hopes and dreams, songs and dance, stories, spirit beliefs, technology, even if it's how to split a rock. Everybody has obligations, assets, prospects, a network of family, allies, and friends, sometimes rivals and enemies. All humans have clothing and marriage of some sort. Are those somehow genetic? Every tribe, every culture has myths of their origins and magical beliefs. We do, too. Magic, science, and religion are a conglomerate that can be divided up many ways. There are many varieties of religious beliefs. Gods, demiurges, spirits of different kinds, Beliefs in souls and afterlives, demons and curses. I won't say superstition because that brings up the question of when superstition stops and religion begins. Remember, there are still people alive today who believe in heaven, hell, devils and angels. A modern note on tribalism. If tribalism didn't die out as cities began. Note that tribal life still exists in Africa and other parts of the world. In Europe, the Romans made various tribes settle down permanently, and that was only 2,000 years ago. And the tribal life of Native Americans was wiped out during the 19th century to 
putting them under the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Okay, back to 10,000 years ago. Agriculture, and quote, ancient history, unquote, begins. Agriculture and the herding of animals began roughly 10,000 years ago. Saving food became possible. Large-scale building it became possible, and quote, civilization could begin. Civilization meaning living in cities, and inequality worsens and tribes are marginalized. Before agriculture, there couldn't be cities or kingdoms and kings or taxes or armies. All those things came with agriculture, since which there have been thousands of wars undocumented, uncountable numbers of people killed and raped, and the accumulated wealth of humanity squandered over and over again. You couldn't have a city without agricultural surplus. You couldn't have an army without agricultural surplus re representing time that somebody didn't have to catch food. Every city, every tower, every square of pavement is built on agricultural surplus. So with agriculture, we could save up, make wine and build ships and have royalty and armies. Then there came empires. You couldn't have a kingdom without a agriculture, let alone an empire. The list of empires in Wikipedia is huge. I stopped counting after 50, and those are just the empires documented since there was writing. It's hard to imagine running an empire without writing. People would have to be very good at memorizing and reciting in some way to lock down promises, i.e. contractual relations. Contractual relations, hard to see how they can do that. The splendors and nature of that past, the cities and empires after agriculture but before writing, are hard to imagine. We have only their ruins to guess about. The great buildings of marble carried somehow by animals and wheels, all the sculptures that they left behind. What was that life like? It's easier to imagine the primitive tribes from which we sprang, since a lot of them still exist. Okay, since agriculture 10,000 years ago, things have happened fast, compared to our hundreds of thousands of years as tribes. About 5,000 years ago came writing. About 5,000 years ago in the Middle East and differently in China and Egypt. There are lots of written language that no one can read in, languages that no one can read anymore. But most writing was on stone or clay at first. Alphabets and alphabetical order came with the Phoenicians, it is thought. And with papyrus and parchment, people started writing their myths and holy books. Meanwhile, about 3000 BC came the Bronze Age, where your army could have sharp swords, bigger armies, bigger wars, and deforestation to smelt the bronze. Then came the Iron Age and deforestation to keep those smithies clanging. And the Roman Empire and the Middle Ages, the technology of iron, took us as far as the 18th century. Since then have come motors and trucks and airplanes and bombs, that was the 20th century. And now we seem to be coming to a climax of human history, about which I won't speculate. Everybody's hard work of hundreds of thousands of years has led to this, our present moment.